for people who are realizing that they're experiencing that, been diagnosed or what have you, what should they do? First thing is that they need to do is pause and stop and, and say to themselves in the mirror, beautiful black body, you are not defective. And then pause with it, hold it, work with it, scribe on it, rock with it, wail with it, hold, let somebody actually hold you. Black folks, black folks won't, when we're going through something, we have a hard time letting our people hold us, not just physically, but emotionally, right? And going through racialized trauma is not an individual experience only. It is, it is also a communal experience. So we must do communal things in order to heal a communal trauma and terror that has happened and continues to happen. This is a special edition of Psychological Injury, Exploring Racial Trauma. I'm Alexander Walker. Now I wanna say thanks again to psychotherapist and educator Resma Menikim for his wonderful insights. I also wanna say thank you to all the people who have downloaded, subscribed, and listened to the podcast thus far. I produced this project while on medical leave with no budget or team, but hearing from listeners about how they have felt seen, affirmed, and encouraged by my work, I could ask for nothing more. Since the first season was produced, I've grown a lot. I've faced some new challenges, but I've also discovered strength in being my vulnerable, authentic self, which is why this episode will be talking about stigma. But first, I need your help. At the time that this is being produced, in late June of 2023, I find myself in a really tough spot financially. I have spent nearly $5,000 and counting on out-of-pocket costs just for my mental health. My savings are exhausted and I've dipped into my retirement. I am now out of work and putting together the funds to relocate for an amazing career opportunity. I currently have a GoFundMe up to help cover the cost. There will be a link in the episode notes. Again, thank you. My decision to produce this podcast, let alone promote it, was not an easy one to make, specifically because of stigma. I'm in a public facing profession where my reputation as a strong, affable, and level headed leader was critical to my success. Now, as one of very few Black queer people in a position of newsroom leadership, I'm telling the world that I struggle with my mental health, that I'm, quote, crazy or unstable. That fear is part of why the interviews I conducted for this show sat unused for more than a year. The American Psychiatric Association reports that more than half of people with mental illness don't receive help for their disorders. People often avoid or delay seeking treatment due to concerns about being treated differently or losing their jobs or livelihood. That has certainly been the case for me. I remember the first time a mental health episode led me to call out sick from work. I had a therapist suggest that I talk to my employer about any possible support. The following day, I went into my boss's office, and before I could finish my sentence, I was shut down, dismissed, and pointed to a company website. I wouldn't talk about my mental health for at least 10 years after that. The APA says that stigma often comes from a lack of understanding and fear. Inaccurate or misleading representations of mental illness in the media contribute to those factors. I'm sure you can think of at least one TV episode where a dangerous, unhinged, or mentally ill person was used as a plot device. And did you ever notice those characters tend to often be women? A review of studies on stigma in The Lancet shows that while the public generally accepts the genetic nature of mental health disorders and the need for treatment, many people still have a negative view of those who live with mental illness. A 2018 study in the Journal of Clinical Medicine Research shows that more than 30% of participants believe that a weak personality caused a person's depression. When we come back, we'll break down some of the different types of stigma and take a closer look at the role it plays in addressing and treating racial trauma. You're listening to Psychological Injury, Exploring Racial Trauma, I'm Alexander Wall. This is Psychological Injury, Exploring Racial Trauma, and I'm Alexander Walker. When it comes to mental health stigma, researchers have identified three types according to the American Psychiatric Association. Public stigma is the negative or discriminatory attitudes others have towards mental illness. Self-stigma is the internalized shame that people with mental illness have about their own condition. Institutional stigma is more systemic, involving policies of government and private organizations to limit opportunities for people with mental illness. For the public, that can mean the notion that people with mental illness are dangerous and to blame for their disorder. 
the individual may blame themselves for their condition, and institutional stereotypes can be embodied into laws and hiring practices. Race is also a factor in how stigma impacts individuals with mental illness. As you heard in an earlier episode of this program, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. avoided seeking help for his severe depression because he is afraid his illness would be used to discredit him and the civil rights movement. He's not alone. More than 50% of Black adults with serious mental illness did not seek treatment. Researchers of one study even noted that stigma prevented their Black participants from being more honest and open about mental health overall. So all my life, you know, you, you like I say, you fall into those stereotype situations. You fall into uh, the, the traumas that you experience. Stigma is something Ray Fisher, a Black father in suburban D.C., told me he considered as he sought mental health treatment. You're always told, you know, you don't, you know, when you grow up in the community, a lot of people, not me personally, but a lot of people, take the position of, you know, you don't need to go talk to a psychologist or, you know, things of that nature. And mental health is health. So you have to do preventive maintenance on all aspects of your health. And those things lean on us, you know, I would say a lot more than, uh, than other people do. And this, you know, the numbers are there to prove it. So you, you brought up something that I've been like wanting to touch on for a while now, and you talked about the, the I guess, the stigma against seeking mental health help when there are community. So, you know, the important thing is with mental health is to talk to somebody because we're not all perfect. You know, if I'm having high blood pressure issues, I'm going to go talk to a cardiologist. If I'm having issues about, you know, doubt and how I feel and and knowing something's wrong in your body always tells you, but that part often gets ignored and you just, you know, you're just told to push through until it gets too late and, you know, it explodes. So, you know, I often tell my children, if you can't talk to me, talk to somebody. Stigma can lead to isolation, being misunderstood by family and friends, bullying and harassment, and a reluctance to seek treatment. But there is a treatment for stigma. Research shows having contact with someone with a mental illness is the best way to address stigma. Studies have also shown that teens especially are hungry for personal anecdotes and stories when they are searching for mental health support online. So seeing celebrities like Demi Lovato, The Rock, and Taraji P. Henson be so open and vocal about their mental health is very encouraging. If you are looking to fight stigma in your own life, the National Alliance on Mental Illness suggests things like showing compassion, talking openly, and educating yourself and others on the issues. And one suggestion that I personally believe in is choosing empowerment, fighting stigma by living a life where we refuse to allow others to dictate how we view and feel about ourselves. This has been a special edition of Psychological Injury, Exploring Racial Trauma. I'm Alexander Walker. Be well.